Good morning children. What happens if you throw a stone towards the sky? Well, we already know that after reaching a certain height, it would start falling down and eventually hit the ground, right? And we also know this is due to the gravitational force of earth which tries to pull every object towards itself. You know, when an object falls towards the earth under the gravitational force alone, we say the object is under a free fall. If you drop a small ball and a big box from the third floor, the earth will pull the box more strongly as it is heavier. Does that mean it will fall faster? Do heavy objects really fall faster? Let us see. When an object falls, its velocity increases rapidly because of gravity. It means the object accelerates. Actually, there is no change in the direction of the motion. So only change in the magnitude of velocity takes place. Now, change in velocity with time means acceleration is there. This acceleration is due to the earth's gravitational force and hence we call it acceleration due to gravity. We denote this acceleration by g. According to Newton's second law of motion, the force applied on an object is equal to the product of its mass and the produced acceleration that is f is equal to mass into acceleration. Say the mass of the falling box is m. So, the force acting on it, which is the gravitational pull, F is equal to mass into acceleration, which is g. So, F is equal to m multiplied by g. The earth is pulling the object. Here, capital M is the mass of earth and small m is the mass of the object. You know, Newton's law of gravitation can give the measurement of that force too. If you remember, the law of gravitation states that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force which is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The force is along the line joining the centers of the two objects. So, F is equal to capital G multiplied by M multiplied by capital M divided by D square. Now, what is the distance between Earth's center and the center of the object? We have denoted it here by D. Let's say the height of object from the surface is H. The distance between the Earth's core and the object should be R plus H, where R is the radius of Earth, but H would be only few meters at max. H is very small compared to R. So, adding a very small quantity, say H to R, should not make much difference. So, we can say R plus H is almost same as R. This means adding H to R would make very very small change so we can ignore H. So we can say the force working on the object is G multiplied by M multiplied by capital M divided by R square where R is the radius of the earth and this force is equal to Mg. So, equating these two, we see M cancel out each other. This means G, which is the acceleration due to gravity, doesn't depend on the mass of the falling object because mass is not even in this equation. So, G is equal to capital G multiplied by capital M divided by R square. So, let us calculate the value of G. The value of capital G which is the gravitational constant is 6.7 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 11. The mass of the earth is approximately 6 multiplied by 10 to the power 24 kg 
and the radius of the earth is almost 6.4 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 meter. Now putting all these values in the equation, g is equal to 6.7 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 11 multiplied by 6 into 10 to the power 24 divided by square of 6.4 multiplied by 10 to the power 6. Now let's calculate the power of 10 first. In the numerator we have 10 to the power minus 11 and 10 to the power 24. So it becomes 10 to the power 13. In the denominator we have square of 10 to the power 6 which becomes 10 to the power 12. So 10 to the power 12 in denominator and 10 to the power 13 in the numerator. So we are left with only 10 in the numerator. If we solve this we get the value as 9.81. If we take decimal places up to two places only. So acceleration of falling object is 9.8 meter per second square. This means falling object accelerates very very fast. And now we also know that acceleration experienced by an object during a free fall is independent of its mass. That's all for now. Bye-bye.